Well, to realize what has to be done. And this time we really focus on education. That's the most important medical part and the educational part. And well, you have seen it costs a lot of money. Uh, we're having a lot of teachers working for us and a lot of school materials. But as long as we find the sponsors in the Netherlands, we are happy. How has the fundraising process been for you? How has it been for you to go back and ask people to give of themselves? Yeah, well, uh, now is becoming a hard time, because especially of the economical recession. But uh, in the very first beginning, after the tsunami, tsunami was a real hype in Europe and I think all over the world. Everybody wanted to donate and wanted to help. But now, five years later, it's getting more and more difficult. But I'm very glad we have a whole board yeah, we have a foundation in the Netherlands, so I'm not the only one who's taking care of the fundraising. We found some real good partners uh, who are uh, helping us on a yearly basis, uh, and that helps a lot because the responsibility, which is on our shoulders to keep it going on, is quite high. There's been a lot of recognition for the work you've been doing, and you have also won many awards. And there's an accolade for an award for the Transparency Award that you have won. Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, yearly we have our annual report, and we try to be as transparent as we can to all our sponsors. Uh, first of all, we write our newsletters every month, so every know everybody knows what's going on. It can be a child who broke a leg or uh, somebody who have got a scholarship or reached their A-level or O-level or whatever. Um, but especially uh, the financial part is very important for people who are sponsoring. So they know where the money goes. And uh, I think, well, what we do, uh, we spend really every euro to the foundation. All of us are volunteers, so the, the people who are in the foundation are volunteers in Holland. So the people here in Sri Lanka, those who are in the trust, of course the people here they get their salaries, it's normal, they can't live without. But because of that we only spend around about 2% overhead cost. If I compare this to other organizations, that's really a big thing. So in terms of transparency we can tell every sponsor and every particular whoever who is donating anything yeah so we only spend two percent overhead costs even the flight tickets we get almost sponsored uh, we received a lot of uh, material now in terms of mecano you know that's mecano that uh, mechanical uh, for mechanical teaching and uh, well this was all for free we could take 100 kilo for free on the airplane. It was transported from Paris to Holland for free. Everybody is still giving a helping hand in, and of course that's, that's fantastic. And that makes it, you can be very transparent. Yeah, if you mentioned that around about 200 foundations try to get the tren, tren Transparency Prize, uh, yes. uh, the, the award, uh, and Marja, with her very small foundation, it's, it's in terms of the big foundations, very small. But we are not the Red Cross, eh? I mean, we are not UNICEF. No, and the UNICEF, but she had the, the award, and then, yeah, it was big, a big surprise for us. But it's also a combination. Eh? We have a fantastic cooperation with the Trust here in Sri Lanka. Uh, we have uh, here Mr. Mohan, his name hasn't been mentioned. Mr. Mohan Saparamadu, he is the manager of the operations, but he is a fantastic architect. So he make, worked out all the plans, eh? like the, the pavilions we have been building, the whole environment. Uh, step by step we worked out uh, a building or whatever what's necessary, he comes with a BOQ. The architects in Holland, they check the BOQ in terms of using the right materials. They come yearly to check eh, how it has been uh, worked out. And so that all together makes that we have a very good relationship all together. How long do you think you'll be forging this bond and this relationship you have and carrying on this welfare with, this, uh, with the home? Well, for me, I hope as long as I live, that's one thing. 
and then another generation in Holland will pick up, and I'm sure here in Sri Lanka also, the younger generation will pick up this project, and let's hope it will go on for many, many years, as long as it's necessary. But I hope, of course, that it won't be necessary to have a children home in Sri Lanka, and let's hope the economical situation will be that strong in your country that everybody can survive without children home and, and have, work on a strong economy. But for the time being, we can guarantee for the forthcoming 10 years. So that's the good thing. A lot of things here are beautiful, but we find that a lot of things that are pretty on the surface may not always be so pretty when we take a closer look. When we hear that the number of children's homes in Sri Lanka are increasing, it means that we have a growing problem in our society. When we need a third party to come in and take care of our children, it means that as a society we are neglecting our collective duty. We are derelict in our duties. These little angels of today are the adults of tomorrow. The responsibility for their future lies not within a single company, but with all of us in society. When the children at the Somavati House of Hope grow up and move out, there will most certainly be others who come here in search of shelter and refuge. And the cycle will go on continuously. The children of the future will no doubt have the same love and care as the children of today. The objective is to make sure that when these children leave the Somavati House of Hope, that they too will have the same dreams and aspirations as every other child in Sri Lanka.